Okay, I got one more Game Boy Color backlight mod that I want to try and install. Uh, if you can tell by the newest addition to my piece of paper here, this is the McWill Game Boy Color backlight screen that I ordered here. I got this one in particular off of, uh, what is it, dragonbox.de, the Dragonbox shop. Uh, this is a company based out of Germany, um, if the URL is any indication. Uh, and I did end up buying this out of my own pocket here. Uh, it cost me 57.98 euro. Uh, I couldn't even begin to tell you what that cost in US dollars. I don't know offhand, but it, I think it worked out to like 70 something dollars. Uh, and I did pay for this out of pocket like I do with all my mods uh, and it comes in this nondescript little white box here pop this open it comes with this is exactly how it shipped here it comes with the instructions that they print out and these are the exact same instructions posted on the for sale page here it tells you where to trim uh, what to solder up so on and so forth but we'll get to that in a minute here and then the screen itself is just in this chintzy little foam here. Ah, excuse me. But that's not the important part. The important part is this thing here. So this is the mod itself. Uh, it comes with this screen, which is, I'm guessing, glued to the PCB. This is McWill LCD on the back. What the first thing I notice uh, after, since I already have a Freckle Shack Game Boy Color, uh, is this uses the exact same LCD. Now, I don't know, you know, is McWill copying Ben Van or whatever, but my theory is that there are only so many LCDs on the market that meet the requirements to work with this properly, and this just happens to be the only one, so they use the same thing. Uh, there's also a third kit out there from Midwest Embedded. It looks like that's a U.S. only kit at the moment. They don't ship internationally. Uh, and that also uses the exact same screen. And I got the uh, power numbers from a buddy on the Game Boy Discord. And they say you can get like three hours out of a pair of 1900 milliamp hour rechargeable AA batteries on uh, max brightness there. And it is quite the power hog there. So this adds uh, anywhere from 170 to 260 milliamps just on top of the Game Boy Color. So you're using 320 milliamps on, on your games there. And one thing to note uh, is these measurements, these all depend on it, the specific voltage that the battery is at. So you can't necessarily compare and say, oh, this city takes 260 milliamps whereas the Taobao mod takes 170. No, that's not, don't, don't, don't compare like that because the uh, specific milliamp hour rating or uh, I guess current draw is going to be dependent fully on the voltage of the batteries themselves. Higher voltage batteries will have, uh, will, 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 will put out less current, I guess. Um, it, it's a matter of watts there. I, can't remember my high school physics at this point, but you know, the higher the voltage, the lower the current, because your Game Boy is only drawing a specific watt or whatever it is. I, I'm not an expert on this. Don't trust me to pass your physics final. Uh, I looked that up, but point being, you could see that it is quite a power hog, especially in comparison to the Taobao mod. Uh, that's the Midwest embedded kit. I'm pretty sure this one is going to be pretty similar. Uh, and this one uses a significantly smaller FPGA here compared to oop, compared to Freckle Shack. And I like how the PCB itself is much more confined. Um, forgot to mention this. You also get this little crystal oscillator that you're supposed to solder on. And we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, yeah, the instructions tell you here's your oscillator. You have to solder pin 1 and pin 4. and yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll get to that. Uh, I guess let's start taking this apart. So, I've already got batteries in it. Works fine. Uh, it's a perfectly happy Game Boy here. I'm gonna take it apart and ruin it for your viewing pleasure. And, it's worth noting that 
I will not be testing with these batteries, but I have resolved my battery issue. Um, I think I mentioned in my last video when I was setting up the Freckle Shack, I was having some trouble because those batteries that I used in particular, they were kind of low. And then I went to get my other set of batteries, which were just about as low. Uh, so I was having some issues there. Um, oh, another thing I forgot to mention regarding the power usage here. Uh, some of these mods do reduce the usable life of your batteries. So, God, I forgot the exact numbers, but just just as an example here, we'll just pretend this is how, this is the, just, yeah, whatever, you know how examples work. Um, so the rechargeable nickel batteries, the nickel metal hydride ones, those have, those start at like 1.2 volts compared to the regular alkaline batteries, which go up to 1.5 volts. So with two of those nickel batteries in series, you have 2.4 volts. Now, normally when those are drained, let's just say they go down to 0.8 volts uh, before you've pretty much used up all the available power. I don't know what the actual number is, but like I said, it's an example. So with those, let's just say your batteries are completely drained at 0.8 volts, which would be 1.6 volts because there's two of them in series. Um, with the mod itself, like maybe the voltage, you know, the switch mode power supply in the Game Boy Color isn't, you know, it, it's not entirely linear as far as the power conversion. So the lower voltage your batteries, the more current it's going to take to get the current that the Game Boy Color in specific requires. And so when you're adding all that extra, um, extra current onto the, the LCD rail, voltage rail, maybe your batteries don't go as low voltage. I feel like I'm just completely butchering this. I hope that made sense. So what I'm trying to say is when your batteries are drained, they'll no longer work in this console, but you can put them into a normal Game Boy Color and you know you can still get a couple hours out of them before they're completely 100% depleted. We want to see stock power usage Got to mark that down here with the original screen. Okay. Yeah. If you have an IKEA in the area, highly recommend these. I did actually test them, and they say 2,400 milliamp milliamps on the uh, package or milliamp hours, whatever. Um, test, they test to plus or minus about 75 of that, depending on the cell. Some of them are a little bit higher, some of them are a little bit lower. Highly recommended. These are like seven bucks for a four pack. Uh, they're significantly better than all of my other rechargeable nickel batteries. Significant. And they should be fully charged or close to can actually test that pretty easy, see what voltage they're at. And can you see the meter? Not at all. Those are at 2.68, so yeah, they're fully charged. So this is, got a CPU too. Uh, what, we'll call that 56 milliamps. Excuse my god awful writing. And then in game, this is the exact same cartridge I've been using to test. We'll call that 80. Okay, so I'm gonna do the cutting first to make this fit. Per the instructions, it says you have to cut off this side bit here, but just test fitting, it doesn't look like that's true. Well, either way, it does look like we need to remove this side here. So I'm going to 
do that with my trusty knife here. I'm just going to go ahead and score along the side here. And oop, I don't need to cut that much. It looks like you need to cut from approximately there, according to the picture, which is looks like right just past the uh, the power switch to the screw post here. So I'm going to, before I get any further, I'm going to get my flush cutters here. Cut right there. And right there. I'm going to go back to score in this. I'm just using the flush cutters. The the sn the score and break method isn't really working for me on this part. Okay. We need to solder up this stupid little crystal oscillator that it comes with. Now I have no idea why this isn't just included on the PCB, or maybe it's just like an afterthought like, oh, we got this all together and something's not working right. I, I don't know, don't ask me, but this is just how it goes. So according to our fancy instructions here, we have to solder pin one and pin four of the oscillator to the Game Boy Color main board at the upper pad of C28. C28 is... This one right here, it's labeled. Yeah, so that's C24, C28, and C29. We want to use the middle one here. And we want to use that upper pad to solder. Pin two is the ground and can be soldered directly to the ground of the Game Boy Color motherboard. They want to use that. I'm probably going to use a different ground. Or maybe I'll use that, whatever. It doesn't really matter that much. It's not very straightforward. Let's see if we can get this working. I'm going to just use some 30 gauge Kynar wire. And I'm gonna try and keep it as short as I can. Okay, so pin three, pin three on the motherboard is connected to pin three on the oscillator now. And it says pin 1 and pin 4 to VCC. So let me flip this back over. That's pin 1 and that's pin 4. So these two, let me do this. Get out of this. big piece of wire there. Because this goes maybe you are supposed to solder up all four pins here. So this is pin two. Whoops, drop that. Okay, so the long one is ground, but the short one is the voltage. Fold that back up. Oh, gotta put the buttons back in. Now eventually I do want to try out the VGA aspect of this mod, but I don't actually have a monitor right now that supports VGA. <laughs> or a screen or anything really. 
uh, nor do I actually have the parts to wire it up because I don't want to just stick a huge VGA port onto this stupid Game Boy Color. Uh, but I would not mind adding like a breakout board or something. Or just, you know, having pin headers and sticking them out that way. I'm going to put these screws in so that all the buttons and everything stay in place while I'm working. So that can go in there like that. And let's get to solder in here. So this one goes to what did we say? C28? Yeah, C28. Just this middle one. I need a smaller tip on my iron. I'm gonna fire up my secondary one here, hang on. And the ground, I'm going to use, well, you know, I never cleaned the power switch on this one. I should probably do that. Whatever, I'm just gonna use that big square that it says to use. Should, and I'm actually going to trim that down because that's too long. Okay, that's there. Wire strippers. And a tweezy boy. Gonna be kind of weird to take apart, but hopefully that's not a common occurrence. What with how short that wire is, and clean that iron and turn it off. So we got the other one now. can use the chisel tip for just about everything but this other iron has a really pointy conical tip on it that I feel like is pretty much required to solder to this capacitor here or at least is going to make my life significantly easier cool that's done Ah, it works, but it's super noisy. Oh. That's... That's not looking good at all. I wonder what my problem is. Switch that over to 10 amp. That's flopping between 23 and 24. So I'm gonna call it 235. I don't know what method I just used to write that, but whatever. We'll try Pokemon Prism, see if that even boots. Oh, that's bad. Okay, now it's pull in 29, 30. We'll call it 295. Uh, oh, let's try one more thing. I have here, I have a EverDrive. Let's 
just in a custom case. An SD card in there. Put that on. Nice and noisy. My screen is still crooked. Oh. Jumping up to <laughs> 0 0.38, 0 0.37. That was kind of sketchy. So 0 0.38 means it's pulling 380 milliamps. Seems to work. But I guess that's that. Okay, so that's enough of that. So let's see. I'm gonna try not to embarrass myself by fucking up basic arithmetic, so I'm gonna use the calculator here. That's about 215 milliamp difference. Let's see, 235 minus 56, 179, interesting. So we'll call that about 200 milliamp difference. So after a little bit of research, I think I've found the problem. Uh, I did end up shortening all the wires on this mod here, and I've just got it in the back half of the shell. But I think the problem boils down to either the fact that this is a Revision 02 motherboard, or more likely it's just the physical connector on the LCD ribbon itself. Because if I push down on this, it you know it'll either get like more noisy or less noisy. I don't know. I'm thinking either there's a problem with the ribbon cable itself, or just the ribbon cable connector on this motherboard here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna swap it out. You know, for shits and giggles, let's try it out without the uh, oscillator soldered down. See what happens. Nothing. You get white screen. So yeah, you need that oscillator. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, we need game in there. Perfect. I don't know how well you can see that. Let me turn off this light. That angled. Almost no. Well, I don't see any dot crawl. Where's my D pad? There's a D pad. I can just put that on top, upside down. it's nice and flat I don't have to get all freaked out thinking about it oh but that doesn't sit flat probably goes off to the side maybe yeah there we go okay so then you get your IR power switch um, but before I go let me try out one more thing Pokemon Pinball since Freckle Shack in particular seems to struggle with this but we'll try it out it's probably fine yeah so far seems to be fine So I think, and uh, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the difference between this implementation, the McWill mod, and the Ben Ven implementation, is that um, the Ben the Freckle Shack 
is rendering frames in real time and it has a particular issue when a frame gets interrupted whereas like the McWill mod, the Taobao screen, um, you know, all, all these other mods, the Midwest embedded one, it's using a frame buffer to render and there might be something built in to just discard the frames that are incomplete or uh, I, I don't know, maybe repeat an old frame when you get a corrupt frame or something like that. But the uh, Freckle Shack, because it's doing it in real time, of course that should mean less lag, uh, input lag between when something happens on the screen, you know, when you're hitting the button, so on and so forth. Um, so in theory, the Freckle Shack is the better mod until but until Ben Ven uh, actually gets that whole white screening issue fixed, I can't say I recommend it if pinball is your game. Um, but so far, the McWill mod seems to be handling this swimmingly, I guess. And yeah, I lost that. But it is what it is. I got these both together. This is Freckle Shack. This is the McWill kit. The yellow one is McWill. The clear is Freckle Shack. Uh, if you have a Freckle Shack lens for your McWill kit, it's probably not going to fit properly, and I'll show you why in a second. Mine is in here crooked. That's probably just a problem with my install in particular, but the image itself is slightly higher up on the LCD than on Freckle Shack. I don't know how well you can see that in the video, but uh, trust me when I say there's less space on top of the two images uh, on on the McWill and then more space on the bottom. Um, I mean your lens, you get that installed, it might look fine, everything might be completely copacetic, but it might not fit properly. So just full disclosure there. A uh, couple more things I want to mention. Uh, having these two side by side next to each other, even though they have the same LCD, the McWill is slightly brighter. And last thing, I drew on my instructions here to make like a pseudo wiring diagram because I don't know about you guys, but I had a really hard time following it. So you solder this one in, well, this is how I installed it. Uh, I'm guessing that's how you're supposed to, but I did one and four together to C28, two, to ground and then three to pin three and that seems to work so I guess we'll call it that and at this point I am finally leaving you uh, to end this video so uh, thanks for watching and uh, keep on doing that cool thing you do and uh, have a good one